Hey guys, here we have a uh, JVC car uh, media player. Now it's not, it doesn't have a CD in it, it's just a media player, which is the new funky term for a CD-less media player. And uh, accepts USB and uh, your usual auxiliary in, radio, and that's it. And, uh, or is it? Yep, that's it. It's got RCA outs on the back. Apparently this one doesn't work, so let's uh, plug it in and prove that point. Oh! Okay. As soon as I plugged it in, uh, it fired up to half an amp and hit the current limit, which is currently set to. So, I think we can safely say something is definitely wrong inside. Let's crack it open. Right, so off comes the faceplate. Virtually every unit made these days, um, across the different brands available, the face comes off. Just a, a uh, security feature that's been come to be widely accepted. Uh, next I will... Oh, hello. Looks like someone's already had a go at this. Hmm. The tab in there has been snapped off, and I know it wasn't anyone... Uh, anyone at the store it came back to so that's concerning they have to push rather hard to get that one to unclip so I guess they found that uh, they weren't going to easily remove the face uh -huh, uh -huh. that's not really happening either little plastic clips under here here we go there's that one one on the side it's looking a bit better Okay, and lucky last, <laughs> yeah, and the one at the bottom flicks back on, that's always the way isn't it, <laughs> okay, I think I'll, instead of snapping that tag off under the air, I'll, I'll lift the metal so that there's not so much flex on it, here we go. one on the side again. And that should pop off like that. Contains the latch for the faceplate. Okay. Uh -huh. No screws. We'll just pry the bottom off. There's little press fit tabs down the side there. So just lift that. She pops off. Uh huh. Okay. Um, is there input plug on this side? We have uh, no obvious burning of anything around there. Let's uh, get the board off the chassis. Looks like we may have to unsolder a couple of metal tags as well. Or not. Yeah. So here's our uh, input plug, um, audio amplifier IC, RCA output connectors, antenna connector, and uh, under here we have uh, input protection diode, um, which we will be testing first because uh, in the event of large current draw. Um, there's obviously a short or low resistance on the input uh, leads so that is the first port of call to check if someone has wired up the uh, the lead in, in reverse uh, that will forward bias the protection diode so that power doesn't flow in reverse through the uh, rest of the circuit and destroying other things um, usually that ends up shorting out if they leave the power on without realizing it because you know people hook it up they think it's all good they plug it in and then they spend the next five minutes pushing buttons trying to figure out why it doesn't work in the meantime the poor little thing's cooking itself because uh, it, it's uh, in protection and there's not always a fuse in place so yeah the fuse should blow uh, these do have a fuse but um, I'm not sure if the fuse is actually in the power feed or not. It looks like it is. So there's a 10 amp fuse there which is in the power 
feed circuit which is okay um, obviously not 10 amps is flowing through there for whatever reason but yeah we'll start with that diode and go from there so there's a closer look at our protection diode um, and it is reversed across the input so that uh, the positive uh, is uh, on this side, negatives on this side, so that if you reverse power to the uh, wiring loom because you're a muppet and you don't know what you're doing, uh, forward bias the diode and just connect um, positive through to negative directly and uh, protect the rest of it. So I'm just checking this diode using the diode check on my meter. It is looking rather sad. It's looking like a short circuit. So now we will unsolder and remove the diode and uh, recheck the resistance across the input to make sure that nothing else has failed and is pulling down the uh, input line. So to help those understand a bit better uh, from a schematic point of view how this diode is connected, um, this is our diode, we have the anode on the left, the cathode on the right. Uh, to forward bias a diode you would need positive connected on the anode uh, and, and negative ground to the uh, cathode so that the current will flow through the diode. So as a protection diode it is connected in reverse with the positive feed, um, in this case 12 volts on the cathode so that should someone wire it up and connect ground to plus and uh, positive feed to ground that would then forward bias the diode and you would have a continuous loop through the diode and avoid damaging uh, any other componentry. It is interesting that the fuse didn't blow I guess there's a chance that they replaced the fuse uh, before they brought it back in an attempt to con the store into replacing it and not realize uh, what they had done. The general policy is if they break it, it's theirs. There's no warranty or anything. That's interesting. There's a light on the front of my camera. I didn't notice that. You can see the reflection on the board. Anyway, uh, as you can see they've labelled the diode here, so we know that's what we're working with. Nice and easy to identify. Easy enough to see though anyway when you flip it over. And it's a uh, it's double-sided board, but there's uh, no solder on the top side, so that will make it easy to extract, or easier to extract. So I like to add a bit of um, fresh solder, especially in these lead-free environments, and that just helps add a little bit more to the connection and get the heat into it, so that when you uh, remove it, it all comes off as completely as possible. I have my solder sucker. It's uh, quite a large unit, but it certainly does the job. There are smaller units available that work quite well, but my one doesn't work very well, so I like this one. Look at that. Clean. Like it never had any. Makes it a bit tricky when the board moves under you as well. I should really support it under something. There we are. Now we should be able to pull that out, not with fingers because it'll still be hot, like pulling teeth. Now the number on this one is it's a 1N5401, so yeah, dime a dozen kind of thing. Just a, a high, high, well, I don't know. They, it's, looking at the size of it, it will handle a, a couple of amps, I suppose, but uh, enough to um, allow the fuse to blow without destroying the diode, I guess, so that you can recover from your mistake by a, a simple fuse replacement. 
So let's find another one. Just before uh, we do though, I will check the resistance on the input uh, between positive and negative just to make sure that we have got everything and had I done this it would have shown up the shorted diode as well but uh, we just went straight for the diode and um, that's not a good sign I'm seeing 12 ohms across the input there so there's still a problem we need to keep looking I'm just going to test the diode while it's out of circuit in light of that uh, last test that showed we still have a low resistance on the input and um, that's testing fine so that's something you should always do is, is recheck your components out of circuit and uh, make sure that you weren't actually measuring a, a fault in the circuit still so we uh, are quite don't need to find that, which is good. Although I have plenty lying around, it wouldn't have been an issue, but we're eliminating possible causes and unfortunately there's a good chance that uh, the this voltage regulator IC could have taken a hit and is loading up the input. I will follow through the uh, traces from the input pins and see where they go they will probably directly go into the regulator uh, yes, the, they also go off to the main power output IC and those output chips do not like to be run in reverse either in fact I'll show you what I've just spotted Okay, right across the top of the chip here, there's some black markings which look like they may have been made from a blowout. It's not very good at all. First step, we'll pull the heatsink off and check the outside of this IC and see if it has actually blown out through the case. I've unscrewed the heatsink from the back and they don't even use heat transfer compound. I've always thought that to be a bit, uh, bit dubious as um, they do run rather warm. And I'll just pop this back and see what we've got. Ah, look at that. Here we go. They've blown the guts out of the input uh, audio output IC. One nasty hole, and you can see the char charring, this magic smoke is left behind on the the front cover there, which is what we saw. It had blown out and made markings around the top. So it's all over, people. This will require a new output chip, which really is maybe a third the cost of the unit um, could possibly purchase cheap on eBay perhaps I would think an IC like that would be about $30 worth possibly $40 just on past experience um, it was maybe 10 years ago when I last obtained a chip for a Sony head unit so the price may have changed a bit and so on but at sort of $30 yeah yeah would be an alright unit wouldn't want to really spend much more than that on it oh well I don't think I'll be fixing this today however I do have a couple of other JVC units and if they have used the same IC uh, we'll see what happens um, I, I've got at least one other unit that isn't repairable and I'm pretty sure the chip is alright so let's have a look right from memory this board is out of a unit that has CD player 
and I traced the problem with it to uh, I removed the tuner IC uh, had developed a short inside it was getting extremely hot and loading everything down um, kind of no good without the tuner IC really well I suppose you could play CDs uh, I don't remember if there was any other faults but that was definitely a major fault with that one so let's pull the IC out and uh, see if it's the same model we might be in luck actually it's not looking so good the original IC has a, a, a chamfer on each corner the top corner there this one's completely square it might just be a design thing they might have just changed the package uh, we will find out when we match the numbers on the case so I was able to uh, piece together the bits of shrapnel that got blown out and I've got a number of JVC 8031 and a quick Google search reveals nothing what I did this this uh, since the guts of this is blown out uh, there's a bit of a cavity and it was a bit hard to get these little pieces to line up so what I actually did uh, if you guys ever need to is just stuff the hole pad it up a bit and I used a little bit of um, polystyrene to do that work quite well um, makes it a bit easier to to reposition the shrapnel so that you can read the number off it hopefully helpful for you guys but uh, not in my case a Google search shows nothing really uh, it's a proprietary IC by the look of it um, maybe something that's rebranded the IC in the other unit is a Toshiba and unfortunately the pin count is different this one has a couple more pins so I won't be able to just drop it in and see how it goes uh, comparing the circuit layout to the data sheet of course you wouldn't just drop it in and expect all the pins to line up but you'd you know you'd check the output lines the input lines versus the power lines and make sure if they all lined up there's a chance that it might work you might be able to use a different chip but in this case no deal so I'm gonna to have to call this one a non-fix and parts bin material really now it's always good to have a selection of bits and pieces especially for surface mount capacitors transistors you never know something may come in handy one day or you keep the fuse aside always a need for fuses but yeah sorry I can't really end this one on a high note but I'm very confident that replacing that IC will get the thing up and running again uh, have it, after removing the IC of course you would check the input rails had it got uh, a still have a low resistance across it you would look further there's no obvious signs of smoke uh, around the voltage regulator IC I don't believe that is a problem right away but certainly since the 12 volt rail goes straight to this IC uh, until that's removed you wouldn't know for sure uh, but that's how I came to that conclusion let's move on to the next one okay on second thought why not pull the uh, IC out and take a measurement and see if we do have any other faults and then we can go through the process of uh, fault finding any further faults so plug it in do a measurement I actually don't have power going through the lead at the moment it's disconnected up at the power supply itself so don't panic there we don't want to be powering the thing up risking letting any more smoke out right meter is on resistance and we'll go entangle my leads positive negative and before we had uh, 15 ohms okay that's better so now we're looking at the input capacitance there and it's um, 2000 ohms and climbing 
So we know for sure that the output chip is the, is the fault and a replacement one would surely correct this unit. It might even be a good idea to actually put power on it, make sure that the face lights up and the functions appear to work just in case the um, reverse power spike had caused any other faults. Now, okay, it may not have been a reverse power issue, like I initially thought, given that the IC has got a big hole in it. They very well may have uh, joined speaker wires together that shouldn't have, and overloaded the chip itself, and the rest of the unit might be fine. But uh, it's certainly okay to power it up without the chip in place. We just won't get any sound out of it, of course. So, yeah, let's do that. I'll just make sure I don't have any solder bridges uh, on the chip connections there. They look all fine to me. And get the face onto it. Where did I put it? There it is. Oh, <clears throat> plug that in. And reposition you. Okay, now even though I don't have the protection diode in there, it's not going to matter because it only benefits protecting against reverse polarity, and I'm not that silly, so um, it's not going to make any bit of difference having it removed from circuit. Now in a pinch, if you can't find a protection diode, and say for example that was your fault, you could leave the diode out and reinforce to those who own the unit not to ever reverse the power again because, yeah, it'll be in trouble. But uh, yeah, so you can leave the diode out, it won't do anything. And let's put some power on this. Okay. That's not very good. It dropped down and uh, wants to pull more than 300 milliamps, which isn't right for something like this. Ah, interesting. Only when things turn on. Hmm, let's do the old what gets hot test, shall we? We'll just turn that on there, and it's running 4 volts at uh, 300 milliamps, and we'll just see if we can feel anything getting warm. Hello. I'll go straight for the CPU. Hmm. Let's, uh, that feels like that could be getting warm. I'm just going to pull the face off it so it's easy to get to. And, uh... Yep, I think I'm just going to put the current up a little bit. Let's go to another 100 milliamps. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> I don't like the look of that. What do we got underneath? Nothing underneath. There's a couple of diodes there that are, that are, are getting warm. There and there. They're near our voltage regulator, so that they could be warm because something else is drawing a bit too much power off the voltage regulator. The main CPU is actually getting quite warm and that's only at 400 milliamps, 5 volts on the input to maintain that. That's a bad sign. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, so yeah, it looks like our, um, our, uh, our uh, main CPU has been damaged. There's a possibility this was caused by reverse polarity. You gotta wonder why the protection diode uh, didn't do much, but I suppose it doesn't take doesn't take a lot. Yeah, either that or our voltage regulator's failed and is pumping more than it should into our poor little CPU there. Dull. Hmm. Maybe we do a bit more research and see if we can't find, fault find this a bit further. Okay, the power IC in this one is an LV5, yeah, LV5684N, which is purposely designed for car radio systems. It has outputs for the power antenna and uh, CD and various other separate um, supply rails. I'm not getting anywhere near the output rails off this chip that you'd expect. Um, A, because it doesn't have 12 volts going in, and that would be expected. Um, it can't regulate properly. The lowest voltage coming out of this thing should be 3.3, which I would safely say is probably to run the CPU uh, and other, com other, other circuits, but um, I'm not getting that. 
which means it's it's not if the regulator was shorted I might say that it's passing through the power supply voltage directly which would be over over voltage for the rest of the circuit but the fact that it's not achieving even 3.3 suggests that it's the circuit that's loading it down not the fault of the power IC and the fact that this chip's getting really hot suggests that's where all of the power is being dissipated so that chip is uh, dead uh, I reckon uh, no other way to prove that other than taking it off the board and I don't think there's any need for that so this one has suffered quite substantial damage that's unfortunate that's the way it goes sometimes. Thanks for watching. I have another JVC unit to come. The model is a KDR 656. And at least that one turns on. But uh, the uh, radio seek buttons don't respond as they should. See you then.